Hey everybody, I'm KK. I'm Kristen. Welcome back to KK Crochet. So today we're going to talk about something that I think intimidates a lot of people. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, you can tell me I'm wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. It won't be the last either. It's okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I've been wrong before, right? Yes. <laughs> so have you. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to talk about crochet skill. And sometimes I think think we don't give ourselves enough credit and I'm not saying that to say that I have great crochet skill I'm saying I've watched other people and the things they do and how they think about themselves and I'm gonna put her on the spot just because I love her Kelly at crochet ma for life I love that woman to death she has some of the most beautiful amigurumis I've ever seen but she doesn't give herself enough credit for the fact that she is great at what she does. She takes on projects that I look at and think, oh my goodness. But I could never. That's what yeah, I exactly. And she does a great job. And then, like many of us, you know, um, we we nitpick our stuff. I know I do that. I do that all the time. Um, but Kelly will put her stuff out there and I'm just like, oh my gosh. And I don't think she realizes how great of crocheter she really is. And um, the the things that she does with Amigurumi is like, and I realize we're following patterns, but even following patterns sometimes, skill is different, right? Our skills are different, our levels are different. I can't crochet like she can crochet. Um, we're all different, we've all grown our skills over time. So I looked up online, the American Crochet Association has four levels of or universal levels of crochet skill and I know a lot of times we see patterns and they have all these different kinds of things like they'll say one thing or another and sometimes it doesn't say this sometimes it's not categorized in these four categories because somebody else put it in as what you know the creator of the pattern has the right to say what they think is a skill level for the pattern and this website on Google and I'll try to remember to put that in here when I post this video has criteria for you to judge what your pattern is whether it is one of these four levels but I can't see how we can ever as creators or pattern designers how we could look at that and give an unbiased opinion or an unbiased skill rating because it's all about perception. It's all about what you bring to the table. It's about your experiences, right? That's how I feel. And that's why I've struggled for years to figure out where I fit in this area. I kind of know now based on their level what they would consider me as. And I actually feel like my skill level is lower than what they would say. Um, but that's just me. I mean, again, we are very critical of ourselves and we shouldn't be. We are high in praise for others, but very critical of ourselves. At least I think so. My husband says I'm my own worst critic. So here are, and on this website, you can see which projects they say qualify for these kinds of things. And um, I'll try to remember some of it. But the first one you have is a beginner. A beginner they consider to be someone who knows basic stitches. Single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, those kinds of things. And if I were going to teach somebody, which I don't, um, but the way I learned was you learn chain first and then you learn a single crochet and you practice that until you get good at it, right? And that's the way I was taught. And then the way I learned other stitches was by conquering patterns. So according to this, you know, if you don't know some of those stitches, then you're still a beginner, but you don't have the qualifications to really say that, right? Because you don't know those skills. You have to learn those skills. So... The way I learned is one stitch at a time, but they are saying that you are still considered a beginner as long as you're learning these stitches and know these stitches. Okay, that's great. Um, I definitely passed beginner stage. I've been crocheting for 40 years. You could crochet for 40 years and not reach a higher level because maybe you don't push yourself. I did that for years. I did not push myself for years. If it was a stitch I'd never done before, I tossed the pattern to the side and moved on to something else. Was not gonna do it. Didn't do hats forever. And now I do a lot of hats. Um, didn't touch amigurumi forever. And now I do that occasionally. Um, I mean, things that if you don't ever try, you're never gonna get there, right? So sometimes you have to push that skill level to get to the next level. Otherwise, if you don't ever try it, how are you gonna learn it? You're not, right? 
So, wake up. Smile. So, you have to try. There are some things that I think Kristen does much better than I do. And she's been crocheting a lot less than I have. She's a lot younger than I am. Hello, she's my daughter. So, there are things that I feel that I have conquered in the past year through YouTube pushing me to do better, to do more, to learn more. The crab stitch, for one. I've learned how to do it better. I hated the crab stitch. I so dislike that stitch. But now, I feel more confident in doing it. So anyway, beginner. Then there is, the next level is easy. Basic stitches, color changes, and shaping. So we're talking being able to drop a color, pick up a color, um, being able to shape amigurumi through increases and decreases, that kind of thing. So, well, maybe not amigurumi, but projects. Being able to shape through increases and decreases and that kind of thing, I guess, is what they're saying is easy. You know, you have certain patterns that you can do, and at least that's my my understanding of what they're saying is that you can shape your projects a little differently. So maybe by increasing a de by following a pattern, you can create a shape, right? So, okay. I would still say I'm okay. I'm still on board with you. I've passed beginner. I'm into easy. I can definitely do basic stitches. I can definitely do basic color work, color changing and shaping, right? Not a problem. I've been doing that for a long time. It used to be if there was a color change, forget it. I'm not doing it. Give me some variegated yarn or it's not happening. So then the next level is called intermediate and intermediate introduces amigurumi. More shaping, more uh, patterns, more tricky patterns, more intricate patterns. Um, by that definition, I should be an intermediate crocheter. I don't consider myself to be an intermediate crocheter because I don't feel like I have mastered the art of amigurumi. Can I do it? Yes. Can I do it well? Yeah, I think so, for the most part, depending on the pattern. Yeah. Can I do it at a level that I think I've mastered that skill? Nope. Mm -mm. No way, Jose. Mm -mm. What about you? I would find myself in between easy and intermediate. I think that's where I find there's got to be a middle of the road, you know. Um, some people call for an advanced beginner. They do not allow for that in their steps of four here, which, you know, I would think that easy would be considered an advanced beginner, and then you would have um, an easy, which may begin to start with some amigurumi, basic amigurumi, or basic hat increases, but nope, that's not how they do it. So anyway, I don't want to confuse anybody. And then there's an experienced, and I will never be an experienced crocheter according to them. And that's because you have to be skilled at, and they're talking skilled at, not just you know how to do it, but you have the knowledge and the ability to skillfully create a project with this, okay? It inclu includes Tunisian, it includes um, advanced color work, and um, some other skills that I just don't have and honestly have no desire to have them. But if that's what is considered to be an experienced crocheter, I, who am I to disagree with them? But I'm not disagreeing with them. I'm telling you my viewpoint. My viewpoint is if you can do basic stitches and you can chain and you can create a blanket back and forth, you are a beginning crocheter or that's my, my theory. If you can move on and you can create a hat and possibly, um, you know, scarves and that kind of thing, like the triangle shawls and that kind of stuff, and follow patterns, then I would say that it's an easy project. Then when you get to intermediate, to me that's more intricate things like um, Sophie's Universe, and which I haven't seen the pattern, but I've seen the, the creation. The mandalas, the um, virus blankets and shawls, where it's a very much more intricate pattern and creation you have to do. Things like um, corner to corner in the round, which I just recently learned. To me, those things are more intricate stitches. When you can create intricate stitches and you can look at a pattern and do whatever it says because you recognize all the stitches. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double, treble, double, um, you know, front post, back post, um, crab stitch, single crochet decrease, you know, 
double crochet decrease while you're shaking your head. I cannot do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you can look at it and figure out how to do all that and you're skilled at doing that and you pick up a pattern, it's like reading a book, you know, when you learn to read and you know most of the words. Like occasionally there's going to be a word you come to, you have to look it up because you don't know the vocabulary word. You don't know the definition, right? If you can look at a pattern and most of the time, 99% of the time, you don't have to look up a stitch, then to me, um, I think you're an intermediate crocheter if you can do, and that's not based on what kinds of projects you can do, but if you can read the pattern, maybe you don't like to do amigurumi. That's fine. So maybe you can do, and I don't think, I think that was just an example, but I'm just saying if you can look at a pattern like that and you know the vocabulary terms, you know the, the stitch terms, and you know how to use them and you can facilitate that, you can create that without a problem, I think you're an intermediate crochet crocheter. An experienced crocheter, yes, um, Tunisian and all those kinds of things are experienced crocheters, but I think it entails more than that. I mean, I really think that you don't have to know Tunisian to be an, an experienced crocheter. Maybe that's not what they're saying. Maybe that's just their example. But I think if you can do, if you can look at patterns and create from patterns or charts, or if you can design without looking at a pattern, are you kidding me? You are an experienced crocheter when you can design your own and you don't have to look at a pattern. I'm sorry. I, that's what I think. I'm not sorry. I think, I say all this to say this if you stuck around this long, okay? I think our perception of ourselves when we crochet is that we know less and can create less than what we really can on a whole. I think we all are like that. I also think that we're more talented than we give ourselves credit for when it comes to being able to create. And that's not to puff anybody up or to say that I'm more talented. I am the first to tell you I'm not. But I think that we don't give ourselves enough credit. That's what I'm saying. For knowing what we know, we don't accept the fact that we know more than we give ourselves credit for. And I think that we pigeonhole ourselves into, I'm still a beginner. I don't know enough to do that. You are never going to get any farther if you don't try. And that was the hardest roadblock for me in my crochet journey. I don't know how to do that. I can't do that. So I'm not going to do that. You will never learn if you don't try. And to me, it doesn't matter where I fall in this, where what people think I am. I know that I enjoy doing what I do. I have fun doing it. I enjoy doing it with Kristen. I enjoy doing it with you all and going on this journey. And it doesn't matter what level I am. Now, for a pattern, I learned to stop looking at these a long time ago. I stopped looking at what level it's on. Because guess what? The person who created the pattern decided where that falls on this scale. Or maybe they didn't even use this. Maybe they decided themselves. Well, I think you need to be, um, you know, an advanced beginner to be able to do this. That's their opinion. There are people who could pick it up, who've been very, crocheting very little time, and probably fly through it. There are people who could pick it up, who've been crocheting for 40 years and not be able to do it without some help or without, that's how we learn. So I say that to say, don't pigeonhole yourself into being in a category. And if you see a pattern that says difficult, don't let that stop you. Read through the pattern first look at the stitches. Do you know, at the top it'll say you have to know how to do these stitches. Do you know how to do them all? Okay. If you do, hit it. Go for it. See what you can come up with. If you don't, YouTube, Google, find the videos that show you how to do that stitch. Can you learn how to do that stitch? Okay. If you can, practice it. Get comfortable with it. Then hit that pattern. See if you can do it. You're never going to grow unless you plant yourself somewhere. Plant yourself in the middle of that pattern that you think is the most difficult for you at this point in your stage of your crochet life and try. I guarantee you'll be thankful you did. I wish I'd done that years ago. Guys, I'm telling you, I missed out on so much because I told myself I wasn't good enough or I told myself I couldn't do that or I couldn't do that because it had this stitch or it had this kind of thing in it or it was emigrimy or it was this or whatever. Don't tell yourself that. Try and see where it gets you. You miss out a lot 
on a lot when you don't try. So that's my story. I've wanted to do this for a while. I think we all kind of um, look at this in a different way. And so look at yourself as what you are. Be honest with where you are in your crochet journey and take that next step because you can do it, I promise. Don't forget to be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others because you don't know anybody else's journey. You got anything to say, miss? No. Where do you fall? In between easy and intermediate. In between easy and intermediate. Okay. I think that that's probably a pretty good, accurate assumption for both of us. 40 years crocheting? How many years crocheting? Like 10. See? Doesn't matter. And I think I'm stuck on intermediate because I don't, or between easy and intermediate because I don't think I'll ever feel like I'm an intermediate crocheter. To me, that indicates something that I don't feel I'm capable of. But if you start breaking it down and you say, can you make this? Can you make this? Can you make this? I'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. No problem. No problem. The list of can you makes for me has gotten longer over the years because it used to be, um, can you make this? No, I don't do that. Can you make this? No, I don't do that. The list of can I make it has gotten longer. The list of will I make it has gotten shorter. And that has to do with my arthritis, not, not about ability. It's about my arthritis or about the I don't want to. Some things I don't want to make. I'm not making them. They don't bring me joy. I'm not doing it. Do what brings you joy this week. Be kind. Be kind to others. Please do something nice for somebody this week to make their journey a better place to be. Love you. Bye. Bye.